Snell's Law. When light crosses a boundary between transparent materials, it refracts or bends. Snell's Law relates the incident outgoing angles of the light to how fast the light travels in the materials. Snell's Law is specifically n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2, where n1 and n2 are the refractive indices in the two materials, and theta 1 and theta 2 are the angles with respect to the normal of the light. So let's see what that means. Here we have a transparent material with a refractive index n1. That means that the velocity of light through this material, or v1, is equal to c divided by n1, where c is the speed of light. And if we have another material with refractive index n2, and corresponding speed v2, or c over n2, then let's look at what happens when light crosses and hits the interface between these two materials. So here's our light that's traveling through the material with refractive index n1, and it hits the boundary. It bends. That's what Snell's law predicts. So here's an example of this. Here's a laser that's hitting some glass, and the laser beam is refracting. It's bending through the glass as well as reflecting off of the surface. So we can draw a normal or a line that's perpendicular to the interface or boundary between the two materials and label theta1 the angle that the incident light makes with the normal and theta2 the angle that the outgoing light makes with the normal. And the specific statement for Snell's law is that n1 times sine theta1 equals n2 times sine theta2. In our specific example that we've drawn, n2 must be larger than n1. Since theta2 is smaller than theta1, which means that sine theta2 is smaller than sine theta1, n2 must be larger than n1 for Snell's law to be satisfied. Otherwise, we could have drawn theta2 as being larger than theta1, in which case n1 must be larger than n2. So in general, the larger the refractive index of the material, the smaller the angle relative to the normal the light will make upon refracting. There are two ways to derive Snell's law. One is using wavefronts, and another way uses Fermat's principle, which states that when light travels from one point to another, it takes the path that requires the least time.